thing I'd like to do with Balboa, if you remember, I did an alcohol wash test in here recently and I found zero mites. But another mite management thing I'm trying in here is the drone frame. Special frame for them to draw a drone size comb and then hopefully lay this with a bunch of drones which will possibly attract any Varroa that's in the hive. So I gotta remove this drone. I put the drone frame in. It's been in there for a few weeks. As of about a week ago, it was about half capped. So I'm hoping it has become fully capped and I can take it out of here. Hoping I time this right and there's not a bunch of drones emerging. This is supposed to be a trap frame. If we do have drones emerging, they could be uh, full of Varroa, if there are any Varroa, but this is a pretty light Varroa hive. Oh yeah, it's all capped up. Ooh, we got some emerged. Ugh. All right, I was late. We got some drones that have emerged. There's a ton that have not emerged. My timing was off by a few days because this is this is emerged here. Not ideal. All right, shake these off. All this hatched. So there's a lot of drones that hatched out of here. But these are all drones that did not hatch. I'm gonna go take this out of here. I'm gonna replace the drone frame with another type of drone frame. My friend Mike made this up for me. We got regular foundation here for them to draw out and maybe store honey at the top. And then down here, foundationless drone comb, which can easily just be cut out and chucked. Let's go down and take a look and open up a few of these cells and see if we see any mites. This frame has pre-stamped cells on it that are much bigger than a regular worker brood cell. And when the bees draw this out, they make lar their, their larger cells. And queens are going to lay unfertilized eggs into a larger cell like this. And unfertilized eggs turn into drones. The concept behind this frame is that the varroa tend to go toward bigger cells and go into the big fat juicy drone larva which are much bigger than a worker larva but also they they stay in the cells feeding on the larva for just a few more days than a worker because drone brood takes longer to pupate and become a drone so this frame is sacrificial it's a trap frame all of these drones hatched out i missed i missed this by a couple days uh, yesterday was pouring rain and for all I know they all came out yesterday. I, I just didn't go up in the bee yard yesterday because it was we had wicked storm. But let's just see if we see any mites inside. So I'm just going to open up a few of these cap cells because that's where the Varroa like to hang out. Okay, 0 for 3. We've got a very healthy hive. All right, that's eight, nine. Okay, that's that's 10 cells, zero mites. This side is a little bit younger than the other side. Uh, this is a week younger. So if the Varroa population in the hive is going up over time, there should be more Varroa. If, if there are Varroa in the hive, there'd be more on this side. Ten. Not a single mite on this frame. All right, I don't feel bad about missing the, uh, the other side and having some hatch. It's not a single Varroa. I've seen Varroa on drone larva and drone pupa before, and you know, there, there's just mites all over usually, and, uh, and there's, there's none. So I didn't see a single mite in this entire frame. I'd say that's, that's pretty good. So 
So it is still mid-July. It's a little it's a little early for Varroa. Oh, there's a there's a drone hatching. All right, you can you can go. There's a brand new drone that made it. So the Varroa population is going to grow over the next couple of months. Clean up the frame and put it up in another hive, and then uh, we'll do another tally in a month or so when uh, the Varroa population could be higher. So this was a this was a good first first run. And my little drone friend here is still climbing on me. The survivor drone. I'm bringing him back, back home to Balboa.